I know some people reject the notion of making a worst movie of the year list or the Razzie Awards, but sometimes movies are bad and stupid and dumb and I don't like them. It's all in good fun. Sucks. Then don't make a bad movie, I guess. Hello, Adam Ryan Donato. 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 Hello, Adam Ryan Donaldo. Hello, Adam Ryan Donato. 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 2021 is probably the most movies I've seen in a year since 2013, which is when I first started watching as many movies in a year as I possibly could. But this year, especially since we just came out of the pandemic and we have all those movies that were supposed to come out in 2020 coming out now, I did the most writing I've ever done. This is the second year I wrote for Disappointment Media. I was writing about a lot of stuff. I proudly claim to be the garbage man because I was regularly taking the worst of the worst because I like writing about bad movies because it's fun. There was a lot of great movies, but there was also a lot of bad movies. Not the worst year ever, I would say, but certainly ones that definitely made me upset. And I'm gonna talk them out now, let's go. Number 10, I'm certainly exaggerating here when I say that this is one of the worst movies of the year, but this is one that personally upset me a lot. It's Black Widow. Scarlett Johansson finally got what she wanted, which was her own solo movie. I'm not sure it was worth it. The timing of this couldn't have been weirder. Spoilers for Endgame, but like, dude, you're dead. It's not like even a woman thing because I don't want to watch Hawkeye either because in this world of superheroes, I'd rather watch people who are super with like powers and stuff. And I get it. The person who's like, oh, Adam, but you like Batman. It's different. Florence Pugh is the big new addition to the MCU here. She plays the little sister of Black Widow. I thought she was Razzie worthy in her performance. She does a Russian accent, kind of like how someone in an Adam Sandler comedy would do a Russian accent, and it's really bad and cringy. This movie's ugly. The villain, Taskmaster, is terrible. Ray Winstone's probably worse. Relatable Marvel cringe humor. Jesus Christ, if you want a good drinking game, just watch this, and every time they say the word Avenger, take a drink, and you'll be dead. Weren't you on the Avengers? Why don't you just call one of your friends on the Avengers? Avengers, like, it's so pandering and stupid and like desperate to be relevant. She's relevant because she was on the Avengers. Did you know that? And it's like, yes, I get it, movie. Sucks. This is the worst MCU movie, in my opinion. Bad. Number nine on my list is going to be Home Sweet Home Alone. So I am someone who deeply loves the first Home Alone movie. I think it's one of the best Christmas movies of all time. The sequel I did not watch until I was an adult. I grew up with the first one and I wasn't as big a fan as the sequel as other people are. I mean, I like Tim Curry, I think he's great. Trump's in it, which sucks. Also, it's just kind of like a retread of the first one and it's bigger. It's also just like the same thing. And it's worse because like at least the stuff in, I know the kid could not do any of the things that he did in the first movie, but at least it was like within the realm of possibility. At one point towards the end of Home Alone 2, he's like welding. I don't even know how to weld. I wouldn't even know how to start. I wouldn't even have the idea to weld. But this reboot, it's funny because on the poster, he's holding Nerf guns and that's very appropriate for this movie because this is like the nerfed version of a Home Alone movie. We have the new kid from Jojo Rabbit, the friend who just wants the cuddles. We also have the new secretary from The Office Kimmy Schmidt. We have, I think his name's Peter, the guy from Deadpool 2 with the mustache. He's a little bear. The plot of this movie is so ridiculous, bad. The action, because it's like an action movie, right? Like the entire point is, okay, well, let's watch these two dumb idiots get themselves into bad situations. Haha, ha, they got hurt. Funny, funny hurt. Cute Christmas, fun family. This movie completely misunderstands what's good about the original. It's fun watching these criminals get hurt because they're criminals and they're like obviously bad. But these are like, in reality, normal, good-ish people, seeing them get hurt is a lot less fun than seeing Joe Pesci, who's like an actual criminal, get hurt. This movie was painful to get through. I remember I started it on a plane and I didn't finish it for at least a month because it made me so upset and I hate this movie. Number eight, we have the last one-star movie. I had to choose between an array of one-star movies. I had only had three to choose from and I chose the three biggest ones because those are the ones that have the highest expectations and deserve to be shit on because you had so much money <laughs> and 
and you utilized a franchise, something that you knew I cared about. So yeah, it's going to sting a little bit more, especially a movie like Space Jam A New Legacy, which I love the first one. This was my, I think, third most anticipated movie of the year because I was like, what are they going to do with it? You could literally do anything because it's the stupidest, dumbest movie we've ever seen in the world. You could do whatever you want with it. So of course, Warner Brothers goes and tries to make a commercial. This is like Ready Player One for babies. LeBron James is one of the worst actors of all time. And it's not even like in a fun Michael Jordan way where we're laughing laughing at how bad it is. It's in like that cringy way where he's like a dad. I love LeBron. I'm a LeBron guy. I grew up loving LeBron. I'm the type of guy that argues LeBron's the greatest basketball player of all time over Jordan. But after this movie, Jordan's the best. Also, I just watched The Last Dance of the First Time and it was fantastic. Michael Jordan is the best ever because Michael Jordan's movie was great and LeBron James movie was terrible. This is awful. Just to quickly run down my big flaw. The first movie is brilliant in its plot because it's a story of a madman whose ego is so inflated that he finds himself in a situation where he feels obligated to defend the Looney Tunes. And the only reason he really does it is because the Monstars get up his ass and are like, ha ha, you're weak and washed. And he's like, you don't talk to me like that. Not only am I going to beat you, but I have a crippling gambling addiction and I'm going to gamble my entire life. And guess what? Because if he wins, the Looney Tunes and everyone's safe and that's it. Like they don't win anything besides, I guess, their freedom, which they should have already had. But if they lose, what's the worst thing that could possibly happen to Michael? He dies? No. If they lose, then Michael becomes a slave in their alien theme park and he has to play basketball against kids in a rigged basketball court where he is chained and literally cannot compete in the game. So he's just losing for eternity. So the worst case scenario for him is not dying. It's not anything happened to his family or anything. It's him being a fucking loser. It's like Uncut Gems, except he's not Jewish. But yeah, this movie's ugly. It's a, just a commercial for Warner Brothers properties, but it does it in a really ugly way. The animation's ugly. The references are stupid. The jokes are bad. It's called Space Jam. We don't go to space ever really actually. I mean, we're in the serververse that has its own version of space, but it's, it's not space. There's also not really jam. I mean, there's music in it, but like the original has such an iconic soundtrack. I believe I can fly space jam. Like there's so many great hits for this movie to have really no cultural impact from its soundtrack is just lame. Number seven on my list, I'm going to go with a movie that I kind of feel bad about being so mean to. I understand now in hindsight that Bruce Willis was really going through it this year and I love him. He's one of my, not one of my all-time favorites, but certainly someone who has done a lot of things that I love and really respect. He hasn't been trying much as of late, but now we know why. I didn't know that a year ago and I had to write about this movie. This is the first movie on my list I had to write about. Cosmic Sin is like that kind of movie that, you know, when you go to Walmart, it's not like the $5 movie bin. Because that has like old movies that are like good. You have the new releases at the front of the movie section. Behind that, it slowly turns into like all these straight to DVD movies that no one's ever heard of and they look fake and bad and dumb. This is one of those. It's a sci-fi movie. I think Frank Grillo's in it. Don't remember much about it. And since I feel bad for Bruce Willis, I won't really tear it apart too much. This is the lowest of the zero star movies. But yeah, no, there's nothing redeemable about this. This is useless. Number six on my list is The Believer. This is a horror movie about a woman. Woman. Same genre as the last one. You'd find it Walmart in that secondary new movie section, straight to DVD bullshit, horror garbage. There's a woman who believes that there's ghosts in her house. My letterbox review was something like, I don't know what's real and what's not, and I really don't care. And it was bad and dumb. I think Billy Zane was in it. Don't watch it. Now to the top five. We have number five, a sequel to a movie that's one of my favorite comedies of all time coming to America. My big problem with this movie is the the appeal of the first one is we have an African prince, you know, is royalty. He's literally got like all these naked model babes massaging his junk all day long. He is supposed to have an arranged marriage, but he wants an opportunity to go to America to see if he can find someone that he chooses. He goes to America and it's funny because he's such a fish out of water and he's so happy in such a angry place in New York. The contrast there works really well and that's why it's funny. But in the sequel, Eddie Murphy's obviously much older. Other people people come to Africa where their kingdom is. It's just obnoxious, really. Like, I feel bad hating this movie because Eddie Murphy really had a great performance in the Dolmite movie. So it kind of felt like somewhat of a resurgence from him. And it's clear that they're really trying here. But this feels like closer to a Medea movie than 
the first Coming to America, which has a lot of real heart and is actually genuinely really funny. Yes, it's obnoxious from time to time, but it works so much better than it does here. It just wasn't my bag. Number four, we have a movie that most people probably don't know of. It's called Mother Schmuckers. This is a foreign film about two idiots who gallivant uh, amongst the town, causing mayhem. It's like Dumb and Dumber, but like on crack. I think the movie starts out with them eating shit or feeding their mom shit. I don't know. The orgy is when it started to get offensive. Sorry, animal orgy, because there's nothing offensive about a group of consenting adults coming together and making love together. But when you start fucking animals, that's where I kind of draw the line. This was painful to get through. Number three, we have Clifford the Big Red Dog, because that dog is just too big. No, I grew up with Clifford the Big Red Dog. I think there was a movie back in the day. It might have went to theaters. The dog looks like a real dog, but it's red. I don't know. It's such a dumb idea that like, you may as well like lean into it and have it look cartoony to a certain extent. I guess the reason why this isn't number one is because it's like a children's movie and I recognize that I'm not the target demographic for this. I did watch it in the best conditions. I watched it alone at the movie theater in a dummy mood and I was like, ah, this is gonna be a really stupid movie. Let's go have fun with it. No, there was no fun. Jack Whitehall is, you know how they have like man of the year? He's like the worst man of the year. Between Clifford the Big Red Dog and Jungle Cruise, he has two of my least favorite performances of the year. He's so obnoxiously unfunny. And this he's kind of like a douche as well. This movie's cringe and bad and dumb and don't let your kids see this. Number two, we have a movie in a franchise that I grew up caring about so much. It was very clear that they had no idea what was happening with this franchise, but I kept watching being like, oh, they're building up to something. They know what's going on and they're slowly revealing stuff to us. No, Paranormal Activity, Next of Kin, an obnoxious waste of time. It's funny because a lot of these movies are streaming movies. I think Clifford went straight, or no, it was in theaters obviously but I think it was a Paramount Plus release as well. I know Coming to America was Amazon. Space Jam obviously went to HBO Max same day. Home Sweet Home Alone was a Disney Plus movie and then Black Widow was available on Disney Plus for the premium access. It's funny with some of these streaming movies I feel like they're just like darts. If it's bad then no one's really gonna be so upset about it because you just watched it at home and who cares? I didn't have to go out to the theater and buy a ticket to go see this. So if it's the worst thing ever it can kind of just fly under the radar. My letterbox review was how could you make the Blair Witch retroactively better? Which that was like a very similar type of movie to this where they make a reboot of a horror franchise that I love that's found footage and they try to add to it and keep moving forward. It's not scary. It's not clever. It's not, it's fun. I enjoyed watching it and shitting on it with my friends, but not in like a truth or dare kind of way where it's like a romp of a time. It's just so bad that just have fun kind of tearing it apart and I hate it so much. I'm done with the franchise. Please let it go. At least like the last few, the marked ones and then the ghost dimension. The ghost dimension had nothing cool. But I was like, at least some of the last ones like had like one shot where I'm like, oh yeah, that was pretty dope and it actually got me a little bit. Let it burn! Remember Halloween kills the beginning in the trailer? Just let it burn! That's how I feel about most of these franchises here. Number one, we have a movie that like act actively pissed me off and is firmly at the number one spot because nothing actually really got me that mad because I just don't get mad. Number one, Ghostbusters Afterlife pissed me off so much. I waited to see this. I had an opportunity to go see it with some buddies the day it came out, but I was like, no, it's not really something I'm, I'm certainly into at all. So I kind of avoided it. And I finally went and watched it with a buddy of mine weeks later. And I was genuinely offended. I love the first Ghostbusters movie. I have a very vivid memory of they had the summer late night classic movies. My mom taking me and there's so many people in the theater these are people were sitting on the steps. I remember liking Ghostbusters 2 growing up. Even Ghostbusters, the 2016 one with the female Ghostbusters, I think that's even better than this kind. I mean, and that's bad too, because it's just not funny. I just genuinely believe that what makes Ghostbusters good isn't the concept at all. It's Bill Murray, Harold Ramis, Ernie Hudson, and Dan Aykroyd. I think my Letterboxd review, Adam said this was his favorite of mine of all time, is the only thing I hate more than women is children. This is just a member Berry's Force Awakens type movie. Everyone is a younger version of the original crew. Everything that happens is just a reference to the original. They go to Walmart at one point. There's a kid named Podcast. That was kind of funny, I guess. The ending of this movie is really the nail in the coffin. Spoilers, I guess, but bringing back 
the old Ghostbusters at the end of the film really deflates the climax and the rise of Ghostbusterdom for the children because it's like, this is their movie, guys. What are you doing here? Bring back Harold Ramis in the form of a forest ghost is offensive. It was super offensive. If you brought him back and you thought it wouldn't be right for him to speak, then don't bring him back at all. I feel like there's a lot more subtle of a way it could be done, but no, this movie is not subtle at all. It's just a copy and paste. And I was really disappointed because this is the only movie on the list where I care about the director. Jason Reitman is actually a good director who's done good things. So the fact that he went out there and made such a disgusting cash grab of a nostalgia member Barry's movie is pathetic. He should be ashamed of himself. Please stop touching Ghostbusters. It's not a Marvel-esque cinematic universe type franchise. It's a fun, stupid comedy from the 80s. Leave it that way forever, please. But yeah, I do a Dynasty top 10 every single year. Uh, I add the movies from the new year. It'd be interesting if I did a Dynasty bottom 10 of the year. Ghostbusters Afterlife chilling with movies like Norma the North or movie 43. And if you think about it, most of these are based off properties. There are three original movies on this list. The moral of the story movies is to do original things because 70% of this list is shameless cash grab wannabe blockbusters that are ass. What was your least favorite movie of the year? Am I dumb? What movie on this list are you like, Adam, Black Widow's so good. Please tell me your disagreements with my list. It's funny, every year I put out this type of list and people are like, but I like that movie. Or I put on my top 10 list and they're like, but that's bad. And I do enjoy that because then I just sit there and put a little argument about why I feel like I'm right. And that's what movies are all about. It's talking about them and having different opinions than other people and getting to discuss them with other people because movies without other people would not be as cool because I, I need you. And in a way, you need me. And that's why we're here. Thank you guys so much. Please like, comment, subscribe. I can't wait for another year of movies and bad movies. I enjoy watching bad movies. Like the Emoji movie. I made sure I went out of my way to see that. I think that was 2017. I was like, oh, well, this is certainly going to be a contender for my bottom 10 list. I get excited to make this list. I should have done this list and done shots. Every movie on this list, I take a shot. And by the end of it, I'm just, I'm just dead. And I feel like I would throw up. I mean, I would still do baby shots, but even with baby shots, I would be dead. So it's a good thing I didn't do that. I can't wait for another year. Ugh. Smack the shit out of my mic.